Hi, Vita. This is Laura. Thanks for stopping to meditate today. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about how it is that meditation can become a chore and how it is that meditation can become a refuge. And then we'll just take a few minutes to practice together. I have some things to read and share. And hopefully this will just be something that you can uh, listen to just to take a moment for yourself and refresh at any point in your day. So one of the things that I have been practicing with in my community, we have a practice period uh, through nearly the end of the year. And the theme is continuous practice. Continuous practice is kind of a challenge or an idea that you just don't have any gaps. You just never stop practicing. And when we say practice, we mean mindfulness or awareness. Of course, this is impossible. We're always going on autopilot and going unconscious. So it's nothing to worry about, but it is something to explore and notice. How is it possible for me to practice continuously? Can I be aware and awake even when I'm not formally sitting meditating? And of course that's true. Awareness is available to us all the time. And sometimes all we need to do is just remind ourselves of that in some way and even taking one mindful breath. Just breathing and knowing that you're breathing. That's it. There's nothing extra. There's no like moral superiority about it. It's just breathing and knowing that you're breathing. That's it. So often we can get in some belief that meditation is something I should do and something that I need to make time for. And it gets added to our list of way too many tasks and then falls off that list. And then we feel guilty about not doing something we should. And so I would encourage you to just think about it a little bit differently. Instead of a task, our practice can be a refuge. And when we say refuge, we mean a shelter from a storm or a place of safety from danger. And that is what our mindfulness practice can be. It can be a place of safety where we don't actually have to do anything. That's the key there. That so often we use meditation to achieve things, to improve ourselves, to get better, to be different, to change our life, to be more peaceful or less something else. When in fact, all it is and all it needs to be is a place for you to just be and not try to change yourself, not try to improve anything, not try to check anything else off the box. What if you could have total permission to just watch whatever's happening in your own experience for a moment and you had total permission to just be? This is what's possible. So one of the ways we do this is to focus on the body and the breath, mainly because the body cannot be in the past. The body cannot be in the future. Neither can the breath. The past is where we compare ourselves in our life, things that we maybe didn't like, try to get away from. The future is maybe something we want to achieve or attain that's not here. So one way we make this a refuge is to just stay present. And that's what I'd like to invite you to do for the next just few minutes. Sound good? All right. So feel free to sit 
in a way that's comfortable. Maybe find some lumbar support for your back. Sometimes it's helpful to um, move the pelvis forward a little bit, kind of almost like sticking your butt out when you're sitting. That way your belly is kind of sticking out a little bit. This is one of those few times that that's a helpful thing. That way you can breathe more freely and your spine will support you. Notice where the hands might be resting. See if you can just rest them comfortably. Maybe hold your hands or rest them on your knees. You can have your eyes open or closed. Either way is fine. It's helpful to still the body and still the eyes. That helps the mind to settle down. But of course, if you need to adjust, if you need to take care of yourself, if you need to make yourself more comfortable, this is your practice. So take care of yourself however you need to. Let's begin just by hearing the sound of the bell. Sounds also happen in the present moment. And so sometimes when we're listening, that too can be a way to practice continuously. So as we sit, perhaps just letting go of everything that came before, everything that's coming next and just allowing yourself to be here right now wherever you find yourself there's nothing else you need to do no place else to be you've already set aside this time to be present to do something for yourself, for your own well-being. So just inviting the body to rest to whatever extent that's possible. If there's any extra tension or holding in the body, just inviting that to let go. Of course, it may or may not let go, and that's okay. This may be the first time you've had a chance to just stop and notice how it is for you. See if you can just accept whatever it is you find just the same way that you would accept a friend. And the same is true for the thoughts, as we sit and breathe, we can notice that the thoughts may be coming rapidly or slowly. You might notice content. The mind gets on its greatest hits. You can just allow that, just kind of set it aside, almost like minimizing it on your computer screen. Now allowing the breath to be front and center. If you'd like to exhale a couple of times, exhaling fully, that can be helpful. Almost like blowing bubbles or blowing a pinwheel. Fully emptying the lungs allows the next inhale to be complete. And 
It's also a way to communicate a little bit more calm to the body. So just allowing the breath to happen normally as it does. Where do you happen to feel the breath in the body? Perhaps in the belly or the chest or the nose, maybe even the shoulders or the back. Or all these places. Just breathing and feeling the body. And it's okay if the mind drifts into thought. That's normal. You can just gently and firmly bring it back and notice. Once again, feeling the breath, feeling the body. Sometimes it can be helpful to see in the mind's eye how the attention and awareness can infuse the whole body. We can invite our sensation to be alive in the whole body. Almost illuminated from within. Can you inhabit this body, really live in it, and allowing it to be a refuge? The place that you are alive right now. This body that's taking care of you for the most part right now. You can follow the breath and let that be a refuge. It's so simple. It doesn't require any thought. It doesn't really require much decision. Just breathing and knowing that you're breathing lets the mind take a rest just for a minute. And letting the mind rest on something so simple and true.
breathing and noticing what arises. There may be emotions. Those too happen in the present moment. You could even check in with the emotional heart, maybe breathing into this region of the body. How is it in the heart? And does each inhale open up a little bit of room here? Again, just allowing your heart to be however it is. And could expand from the heart once again to include the whole body. Finding refuge wherever you may. This present moment can be a refuge. And so as we prepare to close this practice, bringing a little movement into fingers and toes and feeling those sensations. Letting some light in the eyes, maybe noticing colors, light and shadow, reorienting to the room. If you have a window, looking out the window, and when you're ready, if you'd like to reorient to the screen, that's okay too. So I just wanted to share a little section from one of my favorite books by John Kabat-Zinn, Wherever You Go, There You Are, about mindfulness. And this little piece is from the section called Going Inside, which is a nice way to think of refuge. He says, dwelling in stillness and looking inward for some part of each day, we touch what is most real and reliable in ourselves and most easily overlooked and undeveloped. When we can be centered in ourselves, even for brief periods of time, in the face of the pull of the outer world, not having to look elsewhere for something to fill us up or make us happy, we can be at home wherever we find ourselves, at peace with things as they are moment by moment. And then he has a poem from Kabir, Don't go outside your house to see the flowers, my friend. Don't bother with that excursion. Inside your body, there are flowers. One flower has a thousand petals. That will do for a place to sit. Sitting there, you will have a glimpse of beauty inside the body and out of it, before gardens and after gardens. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Feel free to take this practice with you through your day. And if that means just one breath, then that counts. Have a really great day, and I'll see you next time.